Bandwidth for MacBreak is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio, and I'm here again with Mark Spencer. Hey there, Alex. Hey, and what are we talking about today? We're talking about motion. Motion new four. I was going to say three, but we're already to four. It <laughs> yep. seems like, just remember back in the day when it was just one. It's been a it long time motion? coming, though. Yeah, absolutely. And this is, and so, and one of the big things that was left uh, that we didn't get when we got the 3D layers, which mm -hmm. we were very excited about, of course, were stuff like reflections and drop shadows and so on and so forth. And it looks like they yeah. just added all of that in. It really looks like they put in all the stuff that we asked for, all the key major stuff. Right. There's other stuff, there's always stuff, you know, people want have. that's right. not there. Exactly. But the things they got in, I think they really hit the, hit the main point. So one is reflections. So I thought we'd talk a little yeah. bit about reflections Absolutely. today. So here I have a little simple scene. This is a screen grab. Mm -hmm from uh, Vincent LaFerre's really excellent little uh, Reverie right. uh, film that showcases the Canon 5D Mark II. I guess it was the first yeah. big film that kind of hit the it, it's what, internet. It's what sold us on it. Yeah, yeah. beautiful, beautiful little film. Uh, so this is just a screenshot there. And what I have is, in order to cast reflections or see reflections, you need some kind of surface. Right. Now in the past, you could do it without a surface, but you had to do all this rigmarole of yeah. duplicating and inverting and image masking. It wasn't really a reflection, it. it was just silliness. It, yeah, it was a lot of work. It, you could do it and it looked right. pretty good, but mm -hmm. that was the only thing you could do. And, right. and if you needed to do many objects, you have to do it over and over and over again. Right. But now you just throw a surface in there and you turn on reflections and you're good to go. So just to see what, what I've got here, I'm going to go into the perspective view and I'm also going to get rid of this black background by turning on transparency. And you can see I've simply got this, uh, this image sitting uh, straight up and out or perpendicular to a surface. Right. This surface happens to be a, a generator, the color solid generator in motion, right. but it could Something be a shape. Simple. Yeah, it could be a shape, it could be uh, an imported graphic, whatever. Mm -hmm. I find the color solids work pretty well in terms of performance, because sometimes right. you want to scale these pretty big, right. depending on how many objects you have. So I'll go back and uh, make this in color again, and I'll go back to the active camera view. Now to turn on reflections, it's simply a checkbox. Right. So with the ground plane selected, in the properties tab in the inspector, we have this new reflection section. So I'll just hit that checkbox to turn it on. And now it's close to, it's almost a mirror. Bang, yeah, right. yeah, we've right. suddenly got everything been reflected in that ground plane, both the text and the image behind it. Now it's a little bit dimmer than than you know a hundred percent reflection there. Right. But if I it's kind of telling open, you that there's a reflection here. It's, we didn't just repeat it. Yes. Yeah. So it's telling you something's going on. In fact, if we look at the default properties in here, we have this thing called reflectivity, right. which is eighty percent. So if I were to crank that up, then we would see this like mirror mirror image here. Exactly. So I can back that back down a little bit, and then uh, we can also add a little blur, right. make things look like it's actually being diffused a little bit on mm -hmm. some kind of surface. And uh, you can crank that way up. You don't want to go too high. It looks kind of silly if you go way high. And it's right. also completely even blur. It doesn't right. so it's change not doing, yeah, it's based not on the distance. Mm -hmm. So it's just a straight kind of blur. So I'll give it a little bit of blur. Um, then this thing called fall off uh, lets you control, you can see it's on by default, where the reflection stops. Right. Because the surface shouldn't reflect forever. And here it looks like it is because we have just a little space at the bottom. Yeah, right. by default it goes 500 pixels. So I can right. crank that back. And then you can see that reflection start to scale back. Now, there's another parameter under here called exponent, which sounds kind of odd, but it's just think of it like where within that range, where that reflection tapers off. So right. it's still going to finish. So it's, it's a, you start and finish, and it's going to get to that end, but it's just how, where the bulge is. Yeah, so where the bulge is, mm -hmm. exactly. So we can just mess with that a little bit and see how quickly that fades out and kind of tailor right. it a look. And the last thing you can adjust here is the blend mode. So you can change. So you might want it to screen. Screen or add would probably be the most common. Right? Yeah, depending what you've got, you're, you're putting this against, but some bright object on a, on, a, on a background, you might do a screen or add. Well, I think and especially. Pop if, a little more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially when you have darker stuff in front of it, you might want it to be something that where that stuff disappears rather yeah, than just appears over it. The only the light stuff is really so making knock a out the darker mm -hmm. images. Yes, absolutely. So that's about it. There's not a lot of controls in there, right. so it's pretty straightforward. The thing to think about, though, is above this reflection section here right. is this one little pop up that says casts reflection. So while the reflection checks box says whatever you selected, I will reflect things. Right. The cast reflection says will I myself be reflected? So if I right. were a vampire, I would say, no, I do not <laughs> cast reflections. Right. Right? And, and also you might want to do that to make your scene more efficient. 
Um, you know, because, because I think a lot of times, you know, I know in 3D, one of the big problems we have is if everything's reflecting, you, you know, you can end up in this cycle where it takes a long time to render or even yep. just crashes because there's too many uh, bounces. Yep, and we're going to be talking about that as we go into 3D in motion with all these new features because right. managing performance is becomes more critical. Yeah. So for instance, we don't need the ground plane to be reflected back into the text and the images here, so we could turn cast reflection off for that, so right. we'll never see that ground plane like bouncing back in. Right. And that keeps it kind of straightforward here. You could even select something like the text and change its cast reflections to no, and it casts no reflection, right. or reflection only, and then you only see that reflection. And right. that, that could create some kind of interesting special effects to do that. Now. Um, one other kind of interesting thing is that the reflections work on all kinds of objects. Right. So here we just have so some... So it's anything in the scene. Yeah, so paint, particles, reflections. Mm -hmm. So if I play this project back here, um, I have a 3D particle system that's dropping down these sparkles. And as they come close to the floor, I have a... Uh, oh, look at that. ...edge collision, so they yeah. kind of... So they're hitting, they're hitting that there, yeah. and that looks great. Kind of bounce off the floor, and they have this really nice, realistic bouncing look, and the reflection yeah. gives gives it that extra sound. It really makes it feel like you're. Hit. It's not just bouncing off of some black plane. It really gives them something. Like they're sitting on something. Exactly. Really makes it uh, look look sweet. So That's very fantastic. easy to turn on. Very mm -hmm. easy to control and uh, a lot of fun. So just throw a plane in there and right. you've got reflections in your whole project. Fantastic, and, that, and that's just the beginning of, what, of what's coming. Yeah, we're with just motion. scratching the surface. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, you have a lot more of this on Ripple Training right now, right? Sure, so rippletraining.com has a bunch of free uh, short tutorials that go into all of the Final Cut Studio applications. Right. And then uh, we have other training come out that goes more in depth. So I have a right. motion for what's new in-depth training that will be coming out in uh, mid-September timeframe. Awesome, thanks Mark. Yeah, you bet. And thank you for watching Mac Break Studio.